Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you, the listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Kirk Stephenson, Miranda Janelle, That Charlie Dude, and everyone welcome our new patron, Jonathan. Yay. Welcome, Jonathan. On this episode of DTNS, what do you do when politics wants to make you mad? <laughs> Spotify introduces new features for podcasters, and we'll ask Justin Robert Young how to write our senators in the age of AI. This is the Daily Tech News for Thursday, October 24th, 2024. From Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. From Columbus, Ohio, I'm Rob Dunwood. From deep in the heart of Texas, I'm Justin Robert Young. And in for Roger, I'm Anthony Lemos. Anthony Lemos, nice to have you in today. Uh, we've got quite a few things to get through, as always. It's been a big tech news day. So let's start with the quick hits. LinkedIn has been fined 310 Euro, million euros by the Irish Data Protection Commission for violating the EU's GDPR. The regulator found LinkedIn's ad tracking practices breached rules on lawfulness, fairness, and transparency in data processing. LinkedIn was said to have relied on invalid legal bases for its tracking ads businesses and failed to adequately inform users about how their data was being used. The European Union Court of Justice ruled in favor of Intel, ending a nearly 20-year dispute with EU regulators. The European Commission had fined Intel for giving rebates to computer manufacturers like Dell and HP, which regulators argued was an attempt to block competition from AMD. The court, however, found that regulators had failed to properly conduct an economic analysis to prove that the rebates were anti-competitive. This ruling overturns a fine imposed on Intel. Google Calendar is introducing dark mode and material you on the web, making it look a little bit more like the design of other Google workspace apps like Gmail and Docs. The main calendar view will feature rounded corners. Top and sidebars will have a light blue background. Little stuff, but, you know, stuff that makes it look the same. This update will be rolled out over the coming weeks to all Google Workspace customers and individual subscribers and also personal Google account users. Apple might not do a formal product event this October, but on Thursday, Apple SVP Greg J Joswiak teased a week of Mac announcements starting Monday, October 28th. Rumors all point to updated Macs. Apple first announced the M4 chip alongside new iPad Pros in May, and soon... So we've been expecting the chip to show up soon on Macs as well. Last year, Apple hosted a scary fast Mac launch event on Halloween where it revealed its M3 chips and computers that would use them. So maybe it'll be a scary year again. Maybe it will be. Maybe this is like an Apple, like, let's tie into Halloween spooky season. I, I don't know. Uh, just give me the M4 Mac Mini. My God. Uh, with iOS 18.2, Apple will let users in the European Union choose different browser engines now, moving away from the exclusive use of Safari's WebKit. This update, mandated by the EU's Digital Markets Act, or the DMA, lets EU users access alternative browsers like Firefox, Chrome, there are others, with their native engines. The changes are expected to roll out in December, allowing more user flexibility and choice in web browsing. <laughs> Microsoft released a report on Wednesday accusing foreign adversaries of stirring up anger or confusion or both in the U.S. prior to the upcoming presidential election. The report says that Russian operatives are making fake videos to discredit presidential candidates. Chinese groups run social media campaigns against critics of China. Iranian actors are also allegedly also uh, probing election-related websites for interference opportunities. Now, for the record, Russia, China, and Iran all deny involvement. So, Justin, in our Daily Tech newsletter uh, earlier today, Tom, while he was on a plane to Seoul, Korea, by the way, so kudos to Tom, <laughs> uh, wrote, they don't want to change votes or help any particular candidate so much as stir up anger between people. When you see a post that infuriates you, even if it's, if it's from somebody that you know, stop. Consider where it might have originated as a way to make you feel mad and reconsider engaging with it in any way. Even trying to convince the sender they're wrong is engagement, and that's exactly what these malicious actors want you to do. My question is, okay, well, if votes aren't meant to be swayed and not expected to be swayed, 
what's the real point of attempts like this? So some of the best writing on this, uh, I, I think, is from a, a friend of mine, Ryan Macbeth. He's on YouTube and also on Substack. I would encourage people to go pay attention to his disinformation uh, content, essentially. What traditionally this does is just erode faith in not only government, but also institutions and often the press. The more that you can drive up unfavorabilities for various different politicians means that they are more politically vulnerable. And these all these countries, which do hinge a lot on the policies of American politicians, will try to sway things in their own favorable direction. And sometimes it's literally just to make sure you know, America's not having a good time and that an already contentious moment becomes even more contentious. That's kind of the general goal. I kind of wonder, are these, are, are these governments, are, are, are these countries, are, are they doing this if it's not for, uh, to sway this particular election? Is this for training data so that they could potentially in another election actually sway it? Are, are they trying to get signals on how can we really upset the American politic? Oh, that well, worked. Oh, that worked. Yeah. So I'm wondering if this is just they're going to use this for further attacks that they will do in the future when AI is better, when they have more information and they have, a, you know, you know, potentially more capability to do these types of things. Well, let's understand that there's a lot of people that want to affect the American election. Uh, not only foreign countries, businesses, uh, various different interests that have a lot vested into it. The reason why foreign countries do it with stuff like this on the internet is because it's cheap. You know, all you need is a few people in a basement and uh, have them crank out whatever they need to crank out. And boom, you know, if you have a few people running several dozen sock accounts on various different social media platforms, you can very much move the needle on varying different issues. I don't know if it is an effective way that you can materially change the trajectory of an election that it wasn't already going in. What winds up happening is that you have a lot of spaghetti thrown into the wall and then stuff that sticks, you will see these accounts kind of exacerbate just, just to make the, the, the pain point worse. That being said, especially in a binary world where we have two parties in this country and ultimately one wants to win uh, as much as the other, any kind of vulnerability that's discovered is probably going to be exploited and taken advantage by domestic sources. So I don't know without getting into a wide scale voter fraud effort, which is a whole nother conversation, if any kind of international outlet can affect the election. Now, affecting governance is a lot easier. And that's where I would say that you should pay, be paying more attention. But uh, in terms of people's votes, this is, we, we, we have a, thankfully, very, very messy and complicated way, technically, that we elect a president. And I think that's probably to our benefit when it comes to stuff like this. Yeah, I, 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 I guess the story struck me as interesting uh, because I, I, know, I know this happens um, bo both domestically and, you know, from foreign sources and designed to incite chaos, right? That, that's yeah. the best word I can use for, you know, people fighting with each other on Facebook about who even knows what, you know, and, and you know, w whether, it's, whether it's true or not. And what does that do? Does that change my vote? Probably not. I mean, maybe. But probably not. That's not yeah. really the point. The point is to, I don't know, just get everybody to feel more conspiracy theorist about life? Well, I mean, again, these are rifts. So let me use an example that doesn't have anything to do with the election. Uh, but we know that there are there is an anti-war sentiment in America that has very much taken root past the Iraq war. And it, it has become a bipartisan a question of whether or not America should be involved in for, uh, foreign intervention. So when Russia invades Ukraine, it should come as no surprise to anybody that Russia has looked to amplify voices that are in the anti-war movement, be it from the left or the right. Does that make the anti-war movement something totally astroturfed? No, it is a part of the American electoral uh, conversation. It just so happens that the Russians have found a wedge for which they want to push their narrative because they would like it if less American money came in. That is something that I do feel has more of a tangible effect because it has to do with the voting block for which will eventually go to the polls. And it has smaller ramifications when it comes to like House members, for example. But mm -hmm. 
for the president for, for, for the presidential election, I don't know. It, it's just it's just harder. The, the only thing that I would say about all of this is that especially as we are less than two weeks away from the election, if you are listening to this right now and you are living and dying on every little bit of news that comes in about the election, congratulations. You're like me. I understand. It's a very <laughs> intense place to be right now. If you are very worried about the election or you're very dialed in about it and you don't care about the actual political theory of it, I would say this, either apply yourself to your candidate's cause by volunteering to go door knock. There's a lot of different opportunities to do that nationwide. And if you're not, if you don't have the ability to do that, cast your vote and turn on Netflix. There's nothing that you are going to do. There's no fight that you can engage in online. And I would specifically say there is no fight you can have with your loved ones that is going to make the world better and it's going to affect the election in a meaningful way. So it's going to ruin Thanksgiving also. Just just volunteer. Get out there. Do it. If you're volunteering right now, guess what? You're not going to have time to be on Twitter. You're not going to have time to be on Facebook. You're going to be phone banking. You're going to be door knocking and you're going to be actually moving the ball forward for your team. Otherwise, there's no shame in knowing what you know, believing what you believe, casting your vote as, as your duty as an American or not. And then moving on, because that's just going to be the best way that you can not only maintain your sanity, but also not feed into some of these foreign troll farms. Well said. So so Spotify has introduced new auto moderation features for podcasters. This tool helps manage the comments that listeners can leave on episodes, a feature added in July. Initially, podcasters had to manually review and publish all comments. Now the platform offers a customizable auto moderation tool that filters out potentially sensitive or inappropriate comments for review. Creators can also block specific words, phrases, or emojis to automatically send related comments to the review queue. Now, Spotify, depending on which podcast listener reports you listen to or read there's uh, spotify is the number two uh way that u.s listeners like to listen to podcasts they've got about 21 percent market share behind youtube with 31 percent you can leave comments on youtube and it feels like spotify might be trying to play a bit of catch up here the problem is that podcasters just aren't adopting comments on the platform most podcasters aren't aware of them so comments just stack up in the queue before this new feature at least many that are aware flat out disabled them because they don't want to use spotify like a social media platform seems like this new feature may be a way for spotify to get more out of podcasters uh and more podcasters using them so having comments is you know it's kind of a good thing maybe but i want to kind of get your take we're all podcasters i know me personally i'm not really feeling having to go to spotify now to moderate comments so this is probably something that i will disable yeah the more moderation as a content creator which i would call all of us very much um you know, that that can be that can suck some time out of your day. I like this on YouTube, I will say. But that's also because there are certain things I watch on YouTube where the comments are it like turns into like a joke fest, you know, yeah. we're talking. It's like mm-hmm. rap battle video stuff. Like I'm I'm into it. Like, you know, let's see what comment <laughs> got to the top. That's fun. Um, but if uh if it if you're if it's something like this show where we're like well we don't want you know comments to go sideways and people to say inappropriate things then you know you got to get in there and 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 uh you know either have a voice or you know take out voices that you don't think are contributing to the conversation and it's it's work it's work uh and i think you know spotify just kind of being like we're doing this and if you don't like it you don't have to do it but a lot of creators not understanding that um makes for a at least for now uh, a lot of junk that just is going to end up in there i am curious about comments in the year of our lord 2024 because it feels in some ways to be kind of old internet like we don't want it's comments old anywhere. internet yeah yeah like, like it, it, it feels like the, the lesson we've learned is that not everything needs a comment section. And if anything, it just becomes uh, either a place where the worst elements of your uh, audience can congregate and colonize for themselves, or it's something that, that is just a, a problem. Now, adding another place to do it is very interesting for Spotify. I, I would think 
you know, the, the better tool that seems more modern would be some kind of like chat feature where people who are listening to your podcast can all meet each other or talk to each other in a way that isn't just a comment section. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I Spotify might this weekend or next week release the most downloaded podcast of all time because Donald Trump is going on Joe Rogan, right? Based on time and place, this might be supernova gigantic. A and yet, yeah, a lot of people and, listen and probably comment. Yes. And yet, Spotify has never built a best in class listening experience for podcasts. They are not a platform that is built for it. And I don't know. It's always been very confusing to me that Spotify has had this very, very weird relationship with uh, uh, they want to spend a ton of money on podcasts. And obviously, they get a lot of juice from it, but they still have not created a great place to listen to them. You know, it's interesting because Spotify does, you know, Spotify has its kind of like podcast superstars, you know, the exclusives. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, occasionally somebody will come to me and, uh, you know, want my advice about launching a podcast or want to work with me on a podcast. And they go, oh, yeah. And, and Spotify, really important. And I'm like, and, and what is the reason for that? I mean, Spotify is, you can easily just send an RSS feed through Spotify. Like, no problem. Yeah. Like, that's easy. Mm -hmm. You can do that. But but the Spotify specifically as sort of like the place where you get discovered, um, I think is pretty hit and miss. One out of five Americans, actually over one out of five Americans use Spotify. So it's a massive platform for people yeah. listening to podcasts. The thing is, the people who are generally podcast listeners who are, you know, they're listening to multiple shows, they're not using Spotify. They're using yep. everything but Spotify. Spotify seems to be for folks, oh, President Trump's going to be on Joe Rogan. How do I listen to that? Oh, I already got Spotify on my phone. Good. We're, we're good to go. And that'll be the, you know, one of the four podcasts that they listen to this year. Yeah. So um, th this feature, I think you hit it on the, you know, the nail on the head, Justin. It's like, why are you doing comments? Uh, make, you know, wouldn't a, a chat actually be more yeah. effective where we are today? And that, to me, just kind of, you know, illustrates the fact that Spotify, and they have been for some time, it seems like they're just throwing darts right now into the void and just hoping that it hits a balloon somewhere yeah. um, and they can hear the pop in the darkness. Um, I'm, I'm not really sure that this is going to be it because, like, like I said, my experience, when, when it first came out, most people didn't even know that they had, and it's, it's only been a few months, but most people, most podcasters didn't even know they had it. And then the ones when they figured it out, oh, I don't want to have to go moderate all this. Let me just turn them off. I wasn't getting comments there before. I don't need to get them there now. So to me, this is, well, we're going to auto moderate them and have these things turned on by default. Unless it's just a crazy comment, it's just going to show up. And hopefully, because it's just showing up, now you're going to go moderate. Now you're going to go have, you know, build community on our platform. But as a creator, I don't want to build my community on someone else's land, I'd rather do it in my own sub stack or my mm -hmm. own discord or my mm -hmm. own newsletter or my own mm -hmm. community platform, whatever it is that I'm using, not inside of this big behemoth that is called Spotify. Which is interesting because it's like, we, we all still are also social media users who you post something, you get comments, maybe there's some discourse there, you know, maybe it goes off the rails. Hopefully not. You know, it's, it's, we're used to this. We're used to doing this. But it's like, when is this really appropriate anymore? And I think the the answer is, eh, I mean, you should you should you should be able to choose. I mean, on on Twitter on X now, you know, I can I can say no nobody can comment on this tweet. That never yeah. was the case before. I wanted something exactly the opposite of that. I wanted a million likes. <laughs> please, please do more commenting. Yeah. Can I pay for comments? Right, right. Well, if you have a thought on anything uh, social media related or comment related or anything that we talk about on the show, but you don't know our email address, well, I'm going to tell you what it is. Email us at feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. <laughs> Thank you. 
Justin, uh, we're going to make you talk politics again a little bit uh, today because, listen, we're born to do out. it. We're two weeks out, you know, born, exactly. born to do it. Let's uh, go. Let's Lan- go. Let's go. Lance from Mississippi had a question for you specifically regarding AI and access to our political representatives. Lance writes, mm-hmm. I've really enjoyed the DTNS discussions regarding AI with Justin's connection to politics. This thought came to mind. Do you think our usual avenues of contacting our Congress members will be or have already been influenced by AI? Does the term write your senator even mean anything anymore with all the likely bombardment they get on a daily basis from fabricated sources, bots, etc.? All that to say, says Lance, is there still a tried and true method to reach my representatives? Yes, it's called the phone. People pay attention to when you call a a representative's office, leaving a message is something that there is an actual human in your congressperson's office that has to listen to everything, that has to take notes on everything and then summarizes it and brings it to the representative themselves in one form or another. So that has always been the gold standard to reach out. Uh, Of course, if you find yourself in Washington, D.C., Uh, you can tour Congress and uh, you can go try to visit the office of your representative. It is always something that you can do. When I was there uh, recently over the last few months, I went and visited my representative Lloyd Doggett uh, uh, just to say, hi, um, you guys represent me. Isn't that fun? Uh, With that being said, I don't think that there's necessarily a material change in the ability for people to uh, uh, overwhelm an office with, uh, varying different uh, communications. They still got email. They've been getting email for decades now. And that, I don't know if you've noticed, is very easy to send the same or slightly different messages over and over and over and over again. That seems to have, uh, you know, uh, had whatever effect it's going to have on it. The AI, in my opinion, is probably going to be more used on the side of the staff of these representatives to not only synthesize all the information that's come in, but possibly even create new ways that you can interact with your congressperson. So for example, it would not, it is well within the realm of the technology now, but will surely get better going forward that you could load every vote, every speech and every campaign address from a congressperson into a model, train that, and then you could have a conversation with your congressperson, or at least their AI facsimile, in terms of asking them where they yeah, stand like, on certain your, issues. Yeah, what are your policies? Yeah, mm-hmm. but, but you know, how are you going to help me? You know, in my, yeah. you know, in my. Uh, uh, so I, I think that that's that's uh, 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 stuff that I would see that's more realistic. I, I don't think that AI is per se going to create a deluge or flood of bogus stuff, but it could also help uh, certain causes get the word out. I mean, that's that's really where stuff comes in. Oh, and also the only way that anybody makes a decision on where to lean on uh, uh, various different issues is if uh, they talk about it on a cable news network and then all of a sudden the issue they were talking about gets a whole bunch of donations, small donations, then they're going to think twice about like, oh, I don't know, maybe I should talk about this kind of stuff more. Justin, I am with you on, I think that this is actually going to help people who work for politicians. Mm-hmm be much more effective in answering the questions that come in because there's got to be a gajillion emails that are already coming in. AI is only going to help them sort through that and and devise answers more quickly. Um, And then for for people who are calling in, you you mentioned in the, you know, in the pre-show about phone transcriptions. Um, Mm -hmm. They can, somebody can call in, leave their message that can be transcribed, loaded into a, um, into an AI and they give, relative, you know, you know, relatively good answers almost in the politician's own words because they're trained on their own words. That's only going to be a benefit to politicians, particularly the politician staff. So I, I see that being where AI makes its first mark in the sphere of politics, and at least in this way, the way this question was asked, it's going to really help the politicians and their support staff be more responsive to their constituents, in my opinion. I'm surprised that so much emphasis is still being placed on, uh, you know, the 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 modest phone call, 
You know, it's an easy way. You know, you got yeah. the phone number. You got something to say. Leave a message. You know, somebody writes it down. I am surprised that um, more campaigns haven't just said, no, we're, you know, we're we're going to do it some other way. You know, we're going to have a discord or we're, you know, just some, gonna... some have. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that you're going to see a lot of different ways that you can interact with your with, with, with your congressman going forward. But remember, you know, a, a, an average congressional staff is very small and very young. They, there's like usually, you know, if it's in double digits, it's very, very, very small. Many of them are, you know, five, six people. And, and they are, you know, usually certainly under 30. Uh, uh, so it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a big job. Congressional staffers do a lot of work. Yeah. It, it tends to happen that the older you get, the more politically active you get. That's generally how it goes. But yeah. also, the older you get, the less technically inclined you may be. Hmm. So these 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 campaigns, the, the these offices, they got to be real careful about forcing someone to go to you know to say Discord when and, and no longer allow telephone calls because yeah, you're the right. people who vote yeah. for them. <laughs> may actually be more inclined to use a telephone um, mm -hmm. before ever going to something like, you know, to a Discord or something <laughs> right, like that. So yeah. it is Imagine definitely a balancing being like, act. That going we're to Gen Z campaign, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Older people are like, well, I think I want to vote for you, but I don't know how to do that. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, we've 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 done a lot of PX3 good stuff uh, in the show today. Justin, thank you. We could not do it without you. Let's check out the mailbag. Johan wrote in about our AirPods discussion and whether or not they are rude. We were talking about, you know, if you were to wear them as uh, hearing aids, for example. He says, regarding the idea to have a hat or something with a label telling others that I'm using my AirPods as hearing aids reminds me of the famous Norman Doors in The Design of Everyday Things. Don Norman explains that doors that need a label to tell you whether to pull or push are a design failure. So I ask you, should we not seek for a better design of the product itself, an indicator light maybe? We talked about that a little bit uh, yesterday, uh, Rob and, um, and Justin, I know you weren't on the show, but the whole idea of, you know, if you're wearing AirPods and you're listening to somebody, but they think maybe you're not listening, that was sort of a, is it rude? And certainly if you're using them for hearing aids, very much not rude, exactly the opposite. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and sort of like, yeah, is there some sort of an indicator that you could do to make sure that people know I'm not being rude. I just want to hear you better. Yeah. I, I wonder how that's going to change going forward because I, 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 I've long thought that our AirPod culture has, was going to make the transition to hearing aids for, for all of us a lot easier. Uh, uh, but I do think that part of that is going to have to either like the AirPods are just going to be a little bit more discreet or maybe that's the process that they're going to go anyway over the next 10 years. They're going to be a little less conspicuous and a little bit more, you know, you don't even, you can't even really see them. I just, I've never thought, you know, if I've noticed someone's wearing a hearing aid, I mean, it's not, you know, you know, they're not punching me in the face about it. It's like, I've never thought, oh, big deal. It's like, okay, you just, you know, you're trying to hear the world. <laughs> <laughs> Most people don't notice hearing aids on, on other folks unless they unless there's a reason for them to look directly at their ear. As long as the conversation is flowing, yeah. my gut tells me that we're so. Uh, you know, everyone is so used to people wearing AirPods all the time that most people aren't just going to care. It's like if you're if you're talking to me and you're, and you're conversing, I don't care if you've got AirPods. Right. In. Yeah. Like um, you don't I, think I, that I'm, I'm a like conversation with you. I assume that you're listening to me because we're having a conversation. You don't need to have a light to let me know that, oh, these are now in ear mode, you know, or, or you know, or in, uh, you know, in, in a, a hearing aid mode. So I, I don't think that that is necessary. I think that people are just so used to people wearing it, you know, AirPods and other types of earbuds all the time anyway, it's not going to really be that big of a deal. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think we're, we're, we're getting into a life where, um, there are accessibility issues, uh, of course, uh, that this, uh, is going to, you know, help try to tackle. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I've never once thought, oh, you're rude to be wearing AirPods while talking to me. If you can hear me, then you're listening to me. 
<laughs> I don't care what you're wearing. Uh, Justin Robert Young, I, I, I always like what you're wearing. Um, good stuff. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, let folks know where they can keep up with everything that you're doing as we, as we march through into these final two weeks of a big mm-hmm. politics season. Politics, politics, politics.com or take politics seriously.com, whatever you'd like, leads you to our brand new home on Substack. Uh, thank you to everybody who has moved their Patreon support from that website over to Substack. Uh, right now, you have the opportunity, if you would like to support, get our bonus content for one full year. Best price that we are going to offer it at. It is 150 episodes of Politics, Politics, Politics from now until the next election cycle for less than a hundred dollars 99 bucks we're gonna leave it up at that level until halloween so move on over there now before it goes away take politics seriously.com that's a good deal uh thanks to you justin robert young and if you would like to get a recap of the week's tech headlines with insights in how technology affects and disaffects communities of color then check out the tech john where host rob dunwood that's me stephanie humphrey and terrence Gaines dive into the top tech stories of the week delivered from points of view you don't always hear in mainstream media new episodes land tuesday afternoons find it wherever you get your podcast or visit the checkjohn.com that's the tech j-a-w-n.com Patrons, stick around for the extended show, Good Day Internet, Robot Taxis in the Sky. We talked about them yesterday, but there's stuff going on on the ground as well. We'll dive into a little bit more about what is the latest. You can also catch the show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. Find out more, dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We'll be back tomorrow discussing if we really need the device generate, if we need on-device generative AI with Tasia Custodi and Lynn Peralta. We'll see everybody tomorrow. The DTNS family of podcasts, helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>